Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this PAC video short, we're going to cover analysis of management and leadership, an important aspect to the PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management. PAC is an acronym, performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. When we are analyzing the jobs of managers or entire groups of people on a team, at a department level, or at a functional level, I use this model with management areas of performance and also including the individual and contributor team areas of performance. If you thought of this as a model for looking at a learning department, well, they have an ADDIE model, they also have a deployment model, they may have other models for uh, conducting other kinds of businesses they do, maybe they have a separate coaching model at the individual contributor and team level. But what is management doing? So this model breaks it out into leadership, areas of performance, core areas of performance that relate to those individual contributor and team areas of performance. And then the bottom tier of the model is the support areas of performance. Let's look at the leadership areas of performance. Stakeholder relationship management. Do managers need to know who all of their stakeholders are and how well they are currently meeting their needs and how well they are not? And also, what are those future needs that are coming that, that the customer or stakeholder knows about? How well are we positioned to begin to meet those needs or are there things that we're going to need to do? Does the manager then also work in L2, strategic planning and management, where we develop our long-term and mid-term strate strategic plans based on what our stakeholders require? Do we also do in L3 operational planning, the annual or quarterly budgets and plans in terms of what we're going to get done with that budget money? Yes or no is the answer. Do we also set up results, measurement, planning, and management systems so that we can measure results to see how we're doing from in our operations plan and making progress on our strategic plan and our scorecards and in getting customer and other stakeholder feedback and how satisfied they are. Is that part of the manager's job? Are they also involved in L5 and process improvement and planning where they find out that things aren't working very well? Do they also at a high level develop the plans and then manage process improvement? re-engineering of processes, reorganizations, whatever those things might be. Are they also involved in communications planning and management? Do they know what the routine communications protocols are and our vehicles that we use in order to communicate to various target audiences? Do we know what are the do's and the don'ts when the news cameras show up at, for the 10 o'clock news because some incident happened or some happy event happened? and we know what to say and not to say or whether we should not say anything at all and defer it to another group. These are the areas of leadership in this model. At the core level, I'm either planning work and assigning work, monitoring that work, and troubleshooting anything that the monitoring showed me need to be troubleshot. This all relates to the individual contributors, areas of performance, and when I, as a manager, might be doing things that are really individual contributor kinds of jobs, it's just another part of my management job, is to be an individual contributor at times as well. This helps capture that in terms of the specifics of planning those various types of work, and then how to assign that type of work, and then how to monitor it. The support areas of performance include process design and redesign. If in the leadership model somebody else decided that, yes, we're going to do a process improvement effort on the ADDIE process, here's where we kind of go in and redesign that process or create a process where none really ever existed. The second part of the support areas has to do with everything about the human assets, the people, all the human resources kinds of things. So what are my responsibilities? vis-a-vis -vis the people. In S3, it's about what are my responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis the environmental assets that I need to manage. These both go back to the enablers that we would have captured in our analysis. What are the human asset enablers? What are the environmental asset enablers? 
Well, then what are the systems that are in place and what's the manager's role? Do they call HR and get people hired in or do they work with HR to hire people in or do they hire people in and just comply with the HR rules? The last category here, special assignments, is a catch-all because many managers have other duties as assigned and if you don't capture that, I've learned that annoys them because we're not giving recognition for all of the work responsibilities that they have on their plate, so to speak. So our model, the areas of performance of management involve leadership areas of performance, core areas of performance, and support areas of performance. Using this systematically with an analysis team of managers and other subject matter experts will help you systematically identify what are the performance competence requirements of the managers in the target audience. This will then allow you, of course, to systematically derive all of the enabling knowledge and skills for the manager populations. And using the same knowledge and skill categories for managers as individual contributors might help you understand that you've got some active listening content that's needed by all the various audiences and you can begin to take a look at it from a performance standpoint to determine whether or not the contexts are close enough that you truly might be able to share active learning active listening, learning. And if the contexts are too far apart, you may be able to use somebody else's active listening course after you've made the appropriate modifications. I hope this video and this video series is helpful to you in your practice of performance-based training and development, learning and knowledge management. I've been practicing, publishing and presenting on these topics since the early 1980s. My more recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.